began in August of 2009, but for the first two or so years, all road trips were posted to blip.tv and utilized music that would trigger copyright flags today. I could repost the old videos to YouTube, but I feel that a newly re-edited video would be better. As such, the footage you are watching is very old. The year-end review was intended as a look back at multiple trips, but the August trifecta was the only true road trip for 2009. Hello, lifers! Welcome to the 2009 BWL Road Trip Year-End Review. the smoke monster from Lost. It will be a bit jarring to hear the differences in my voice quality for this video, but this video as presented in 2009 simply won't work. When I planned the original year-end review, I had intended to take several smaller, more local trips and make road trip videos for each of them. However, that didn't really happen. I recorded video at those other events and trips, of course, but they were often so much smaller that the final video would have been very short and really pointless. So I ultimately decided to cut them. I slowed them down, guys. I got them, guys. Good job, David. Finally. You are good I included them in the year-end review just to keep it from being a repeat of the QuakeCon trip. I actually regret even making the original year-end review. I did something similar in 2010, but with more footage from other trips, and I do honestly regret making that video as well. That trip was basically just a simple ranking of my trips with Akon and QuakeCon naturally taking the top spots. Neither year-end video was particularly needed and I feel that they don't really add much to the run of those first years of the BWL road trip. Today, I sort of view them as lessons learned from inexperience. Since I count the year-end review in the episode count, I have instead decided to make them into something else. I'm going to take an opportunity to discuss a bit of what I learned from those early experiences, sort of a behind-the-scenes look back. Pancakes. My first year of road trip videos. 2009 was recorded with a borrowed point and shoot camera from my sister. The quality was okay, but limited in length. But my budget was extremely limited. I bought some large data cards and made do. It was edited using Windows Movie Maker and really using the best trickery I could to squeeze just a little more from each video. 
I wanted to go to Akon in 2009, but simply didn't have the funds. And until about three weeks out, I wasn't sure I'd be able to go to QuakeCon. My job at the time provided very little assurance of time off. I had gobs of vacation leave, holiday leave, compensatory leave. It was a state government job after all. But I could not guarantee leave on specific dates due to constant coverage shortages, unless I had tickets and reservations and would lose money. In future years, I would make use of that. I would take it to my advantage, uh, as well as trading days off with co-workers to make a concrete schedule. For QuakeCon, I received my leave largely because I was considered too good of an employee to not get my time off. But I wouldn't know anything for certain until about three weeks out. If memory serves, 2009 was the last year that QuakeCon used the official forums to register attendees. It was free, but I wasn't sure I'd have the money or hotel stay or approved time off when registration occurred months earlier. Once I knew I could go, I also learned that the Dallas Comic Con was happening the same weekend. It was low cost enough for me to pick up a weekend pass. This was probably my first mistake, if you don't count the lack of planning ahead of time. QuakeCon is huge, and I would have had a far better time had I focused on QuakeCon alone. I booked a cheap hotel using Priceline, and used photocopy pages out of my Texas Atlas and an old school map to draft my driving plans. My phone at the time was a simple track phone, flip phone. I also picked up a big six pack at Six Flags. It was cheaper than a season pass by a bit and would give me six one day tickets. In August, when the big day finally arrived, I was ready with cheap hotel and many plans. On Thursday, I drove my Saturn Ion 3 and planned to leave town by 6 a.m. I didn't have cruise control, so I planned for several stops along the way. And at this point, you will start to see rookie mistakes pile up. First, I was late leaving home by at least 30 minutes. I had difficulty sleeping the night before, largely because I worked the night shift. But also, once I did get up, I waited too long to really start packing. Then, I planned to stop at the store for some items, including ice, snacks, and fuel. This took time. I left town closer to 7 or 7.30, and immediately stopped at a rest stop to record an intro. Um, overall, I am about, well, it's just about 8 o'clock, so I'm about two hours late now. So, and I'm just now approaching Baird. I'm about five miles out. Baird is 21 miles from Abilene. I stopped again at Eastland to visit the courthouse and a convenience store. I also stopped in Ranger, but didn't have time to record that stop. Plus, it was only five miles further down the road. I stopped again at New York Hill Restaurant near Greystone Castle. I actually like to eat at that restaurant, but I didn't on this occasion because I planned to eat at Weatherford. This is actually uh, called Greystone Castle. It's a hunting lodge. Uh, you can book it for a lot of the different uh, exotic animal hunts, uh, skeet shooting. They've even got a new business uh, business meeting type area. I stopped again at a now sadly demolished rest stop about halfway between the castle and Weatherford. Mostly just to record another intro or a little more information. It, unfortunately, it's already 10:20, so I'm obviously not going to get to Arlington anytime near opening. Um, just running that late, but. I'm having a pretty good time. I just kind of regret that I got off to such a late start. After breakfast, I recorded the pancakes clip for an after the credit stinger and made a choice. I continued on to QuakeCon directly. Only really getting lost once, I arrived in Grapevine as I missed an exit or exited too early or something. All I know is I completely lost track of 114 and many of the named roads were not where I had expected them to be. Well, there's got to be some kind of verification. Uh, what is this? What is this? Fire administration. Okay, I'm glad to know we're fire administration. What is this big 
building in front of me. Oh, I did it. I made it the right way. Now I have to figure out what in the world I'm doing. Do I need to go right here? I do. I need to go right here. I hope. Actually, I think I just went the wrong way. <laughs> I do. I think I went the wrong way. I think I think I was supposed to go down the part that was roofable. <laughs> Uh, it is 114, 126, okay. So yeah, I just went the wrong direction. I did not have a registration for QuakeCon since that was long closed, but there was a first come first serve line. So I intended to go there with my laptop. However, I did not understand that it would not really truly begin moving until late that evening. I waited in line until after missing the opening ceremonies and John Carmack's keynote address. I also missed a panel or two that I had intended to attend. At around 5 p.m., word arrived that a few seats might be opened up at around 8, so I left the line, put my laptop back in my car, and entered with general admission to record at least some footage before leaving for the day. Next, I checked into my hotel some three miles away. I was a little surprised, but I got what I paid for. By December, I had learned to better plan for hotel stay and booked earlier. Costs would remain a problem in the following years, but I was able to book better locations, at least to a degree. I enjoyed some time at Six Flags that evening, and actually, I had more fun at least more so than I had had at QuakeCon up to that point. I'm be here. I'm having a blast. Then, I went back to my hotel and spent several hours recording, editing, and with hotel Wi-Fi, uploading a daily update. This was a particularly big mistake. I edited one of these videos every night of the trip. It took me later into the night every day single night. I went to Six Flags on Friday morning. I had fun, but a little less so than the night before. This was partly because several rides I went to required at least two riders, so I kept having to wait for a second single occupant to join me. At QuakeCon, I went in general admission from the start and went to more panels, but I didn't really understand what events were and what I would have enjoyed. All the way. Uh, I went through this yesterday. It doesn't end well. I deliberately returned to Six Flags and missed out on Master Pancake Theater riffing The Lord of the Rings. That was the year that Balls Deep became the drinking game phrase. I also missed the Forum Horrors meeting after the show. Once again, I made an update video and went to bed just a little later. Saturday, I started the day in Richardson's Civic Center, which was considerably smaller than I had expected and was mashed in with their city council chambers and the public library. As you can imagine, I was surprised at how much smaller the event was than expected. They had some really interesting guests, but I didn't have much money to spend and there wasn't much else in the way of activities or panels as I had seen in my research from larger events. I spent a fair amount of time walking in a big circuit from the entrance through Artist Alley back into the vendor area and back to the entrance. Panels were conducted in the city council chambers and I really didn't have much else to do. I walked away with a decent swag bag and some other goodies. But I was a bit disappointed. In the end, I spent a few hours there with most of my time in line. Then I went to QuakeCon, and this time I went to the first come first serve line, which had long since disappeared. I basically walked straight to the BYOC to a seat 
and was able to enjoy some time playing Quick Live and TF2. I did get somewhat frustrated with the check-in as I had a short Cat5 patch cable in my bag and those weren't allowed. The volunteer said, you can have this, and tossed it on the ground behind him. I would have preferred he had made me take it back to my car. I actually had forgotten it was in my bag and frankly, they cost money, which I didn't have much to spare at the time. But I let it go. If it had been a longer cable, I might not have. I didn't record the drive from Richardson, but it was long, much longer than I had expected. I had not considered traffic or the actual distance from Richardson to Grapevine. So I missed most panels that day. I went to the finals party and had a blast though. Free food and a vendor selling beer. In 2009, free food meant hot dogs, nachos, tea, water, and if you could get them, cans of balls. And tournament finals were with a packed room of attendees. I slipped in and out during the finals to play a little more in the BYOC. Finally, relatively early in the night, the power went out. My laptop stayed up due to its battery, but everyone on desktop units was out of luck. I don't know what to do with you or what happened, but they still haven't got everything put in here for Sunday. It stayed down long enough that I finally decided to pack up and return to the finals party for the rest of the evening. I made another update video, and this time I didn't finish until around 4 a.m. Sunday morning, I checked out of my hotel and returned to the Dallas Comic Con. Having had the fun I did the night before and being extra tired, I was a bit more bored and disappointed. It was an interesting event, again, some big name guests, but it just didn't have much to do, and I had expected more. I made the long drive back to Six Flags since QuakeCon shut down completely by noon back then. I enjoyed myself and stayed later than I really should have. Then I drove home with multiple stops and I was way too tired. I should not have done that. But I made it safely home and then edited my final daily update video and uploaded it. I went to bed around 6 a.m. Monday morning. So, yeah, some of that is pretty hazy. And those videos were not only not that great, but also not really worth posting. Very little of those videos even exist now. My first road trip. It was fun, but I did not enjoy QuakeCon nearly as much as I should have. By December, when I made the year-end review, I was well aware of that. I had months to think about the mistakes I had made. Not planning for the trip and considering a shorter one day or weekend trip if I didn't get the time off. Not really researching the finer points of the trip. The Equinox visual folks had been making videos since 2005. I had seen some of them. I could have looked up more and a few other people's videos as well, which I did watch before 2010. But there is a first time for everything. I did not ask questions on the forums. Instead, I just lurked and didn't think to check in from time to time during the event to see what was being discussed. I shouldn't have tried to go to both QuakeCon and the Dallas Comic Con. As a result, I didn't enjoy either event fully and I missed a lot in the commute between. And I didn't try to make an extra day on Wednesday or use Sunday as a Six Flags only day, which would have been far more fun. I didn't really have much of a budget to speak of, and any trip really would have benefited from more planning in the months prior, especially if I wanted to make a video about the experience. I tested some of this during my Holiday in the Park recording and felt a far greater success. I needed to account for traffic, stops, recording, and errands when planning my commutes, and I needed to plan out expenses better with extra funds for unexpected events and costs. In short, though, I tried to do too much with the least amount of research and planning possible. They say you always remember your first QuakeCon, and I'm sure I will. But I really, to this day, remember what I missed more. 
I took these considerations into account over the years and I've had some much better experience since then. To give you an idea, as of this date in February 2023, nothing has been announced uh, official for QuakeCon 2023, but I have already done considerable planning for expenses. I want to take Red Bear along for his first in-person event, and I have needed to work out the extra costs, assuming that the event's going to happen. They might not. He wants to go to land all night as well, but we won't have the budget for that until at least the October event if they have that one again this year. It might even need to wait for their April event next year. But I do plan to get him there eventually. check out our Discord. The link's in the description and all over our website. And be sure to subscribe. And if you're on YouTube, use the bell notification. That will help, maybe, help you see new content from us. Or at least increases our chances.